Hi, my name's Aaron Hendra. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, my songs, and the second chance I got to share my music with the world and with you. I started playing guitar when I was about 10 years old. An aunt in Australia gave me a guitar, an acoustic guitar, and I couldn't put it down. I took it everywhere with me. Growing up, uh, we lived in the country, and um, my brother played bass. We'd spend hours in the attic just jamming and kind of dreaming about having a band. And I just fell in love with music and melody. And then uh, a few years later, we moved to Melbourne. I had this little studio in the garage, and one night this song just came out of nowhere. It's called Don't Let It End. Okay, so my name's Erwin Thomas, and I first met Aaron in 1996 in Australia when he'd written a great song called uh, Don't Let It End for one of our coveted Australian artists named John Farnham. And John Farnham is like Australia's Bruce Springsteen. He would sell out arenas, 10 nights in a row. Anyway, I remember reading somewhere that John had a new album coming out and he was looking for songs. I just had such a strong feeling about this song. I ended up doing a little piano vocal demo and put it on a cassette and dropped it into John Farnham's record company office. And, you know, people kind of laughed at me and thought, oh, good luck. It's, a, it's the ultimate long shot. But one day, I'm driving my van as a delivery driver and my cell phone rings and I answer it and the voice says, hi, could I speak to Aaron Hendra? And I said, yes, that's me. Mate, it's John Farnham. We just listened to your song five times. You're amazing. Who the hell are you? One of the good things that came out of recording in that area was a song by a local songwriter, Don't Let It End. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Aaron Hendra. Um... I see that we're talking about the Cheryl Crow thing before. I mean, I, I do get songs from everywhere, people next door and, 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 and people overseas. And he, uh, he's a local, lives around where the studio is, and, and just on the off chance that I'd listen to it, he came into the studio one day and handed a tape to Catherine, who, who runs the studio out there on the phone, and he just handed her the, handed her this tape and said, look, it's, you know, any chance of fun, I'm having a listen to this. And, well, we put it in the box with everything else and uh, it came out one day and Ross and I sat there and listened to it and it had a mobile number on the back. I was blown away by the song, I think it's a terrific little song. And I really enjoyed singing it and uh, I rang his mobile phone he said, oh hang on, I've got to pull over a minute. Went, now what, what? <laughs> and I told him that you know I was going to demo the song for the album. He was very pleased, which was nice. And that was one of the biggest thrills of my life. It's just such an amazing feeling to have your hero call you. Uh, and then, you know, obviously we told him it had made the album and he's, he was very happy. I don't even know went. whether he's heard the track yet. So that's what we've done to it. This one's called Don't Let It End. He's a very good singer himself. And he's written other stuff that's been recorded before? No, he's never had anything recorded before. Um, but I have no doubt in my mind that he will in the future. He writes very good songs. I mean, he's got a terrific way with uh, the way he writes. my start as a songwriter. The band that we had together at the time was my brother Russ and a young guitar player by the name of Ben Carey. He actually plays with the band Lifehouse now. And we put a plan together to move to the States and we were just fearless, excited young kids. Within a week, we had two major label deals on the table. We thought we were set. For so many bands and so many artists, the music industry is such a jungle. For lots of different reasons, it didn't work out at Hollywood Records and we were devastated at the end of the year. We ended up being dropped by the label. And at that point, I had to really make a decision. Am I gonna keep doing this or am I just gonna give up? And at that point, I just decided that my life was about writing songs, and no matter what, I was going to continue to to do that forever and never give up. So the major label deal had come and gone, and I'm in LA with very little money. We sold 
most of the furniture we had, sold all my guitars, and it really got tough. The record deal is gone. What do I do next? Somehow I have to find a way to pay the bills and survive. Uh, we got married and then, you know, the hits the fan and there's not a lot of money coming in. I couldn't get an audition to save my life. So for four years, every morning, I woke up at 4.30 and drove to this construction site and gave it 100%. But I always was just drawn back and called by, you know, my dream to write songs. That's when you really know if you're gonna make it or not with someone is, you know, the terminology, oh, I could, I could live with them in a cardboard box. We pretty much, not cardboard box, we were almost there. And um, it was tough, but you know what? Um, if, if I would want to be in a cardboard box with anybody, it'd be Aaron Hendra. <laughs> so I kept holding on and I wouldn't give up. And so uh, even though every day I was working hard at the site, I'd come home and go into my little bedroom studio that I'd built and, and try to write and try to come up with some ideas and I'd do little acoustic gigs around town just to keep that flame alive. And then one day, that second chance arrived. My October song keeps me hanging on like the face of that. So that is anymore. My October song, the angels of prayer. So right when I thought, I just, this is so hard. This is not why I came here. In walks Rick St. George. And Rick St. George is a powerhouse. He is a risk taker and he believed in me and my music and really thought that I deserved a second chance. He thought that my music deserved to be heard by the world. And together we created Give Records. Aaron Hendra and Tiff, I meet these people and I immediately like everything about them. And, um, but not knowing the situation, you know, all the hard work he's doing, working 70, 80 hours of construction a week, coming home exhausted. Like I said, you're not going to get any music done. you got to understand that Aaron Hendra, I knew after seeing him sing acoustically for six months, I want to spend whatever money it took to make this guy the biggest contemporary pop star in the world. And that was my goal. It was my goal from the very beginning. So I said, you're going to have to quit your job. We'll get Gigi to come up here and uh, we'll start making some music. We came back to this property right here, and we all lived on the property. We all were like one big family, and those guys started putting new music together. The October song, I mean, this is my life's work. This is my heart and soul. It has to be extraordinary and Rick and I both agreed we had the same vision that we needed to capture and record this album in a world class way. And he found this amazing historic mansion on Sunset Boulevard in Beverly Hills and we set up our studio there. It was, I mean this place was like every musician's dream. There was a ballroom that we used as the main tracking room with 30 foot high ceilings and a fireplace so big you could stand in. The vibe was incredible, and that's where we made this album. And we spent two years living there, recording these songs. And to top it all off, to mix the album, I got to work with one of my absolute heroes, Tom Lord Alge. I have to introduce one of my best friends on the planet, incredible human being and world-class rock star drummer, Gigi Gonaway. Gigi Gregory Gonaway, G Dog, Lord Gonaway. <laughs> he has so many nicknames, it's hilarious. Now, a lot of you might know this already, but Gigi was Mariah Carey's drummer 15 years and did all the big world tours. When you watch the Unplugged concert that she did, that's Gigi playing drums in the background. During the Mariah years, I always um, wanted to have Aaron around me 
wanted to be around him, wanted to figure out some way to kind of keep our friendship together. And I remember he called me and said, hey man, I want to come out for a couple of days on the road with you. <laughs> it's like, come on. <laughs> his honesty, his dedication to his art and his craft, it was incredible. And even back then, it was obvious that, that he was a great, great songwriter. And, and I thought to myself, this is something very special. We have to develop this. We have to do something with this. In the construction years, Gigi gone away was one of the few people that would call me and say, what are you doing? What are you doing with your songs? Don't give up, you have to keep trying. And I'd be like, man, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's going on? I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing construction. And I was like, wow. Thinking in my mind, not saying it out loud, this brother is doing that to pay the bills, but there's a whole nother side that the world's gotta see. The thing I love the most about Gigi is that when Aaron was struggling, lost his deal with Hollywood Records, Every single person that knew Aaron in the music industry stopped taking his calls. So it's brutal, but one man did take his calls, and that was Gigi Gregory Gonaway. And I think I will love Gigi forever just for that one simple thing that he did. This man is one of those human beings that can walk in a room, just be there for two seconds, and everyone will remember those two seconds. His light shines so bright. I would do anything for that guy. If Gigi couldn't even play drums, We'd have a drum player in front of him to play drums. That's how cool Gigi is and that's what friendship's he all about. He has been one of the biggest believers and the biggest supporters for myself personally and my music ever since I came to America. He's just, he's been a constant source of encouragement and I'm so grateful to have him uh, as a friend and also to have him as part of the Aaron Hendry Project. This blows my mind every time I tell people about it, but I'm singing on stage with one of my heroes. Never dreamed that I'd get the chance to work with Erwin. As Jack Jones, he was the lead singer in a band called Southern Sons that I just loved. I would go and see all their shows in Australia growing up. A singer's singer, a guitar player's guitar player. So in 2001, we lost Aaron from Australia and America gained a very gifted and talented artist, producer. It's been quite an inspiring journey and to be able to be involved with it makes me uh, pretty proud. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. The reason we wanted to use the word project is because we have a mission and we want to use our gift of music and what we do to help people's lives in this world that can't help themselves. A major motion picture was made starring Gerard Butler about a guy called the Machine Gun Preacher. Sam actually visited the studio and told me his story and asked me to write a song to help the children of Sudan. I was so inspired by his story that I went to sleep one night and woke up dreaming the words to One Man's War. While recording this song, we had an idea to go to Sudan and actually record the children that Sam has rescued sing at the end of the song. And that's what we did. And it was just an incredible experience to travel to Africa and visit the orphanage that he's built. And then to experience these incredible children sing this song and the words, we're going home. It gives me the goosebumps right now. I, I'm really, I'm really impressed that it came up so quick. <laughs> TV thing, and that last part, they didn't only bring them kids on singing with you. Imagine it come on a big the screen. Video. Woo, that'd be powerful. You are blessed when you take care of his widows and his orphans. 
you can be messed up. You know, you have to answer for mess ups. Sure. But the thing about it is, you are blessed when you take care of the widows and orphans. God knows, you know, you're you're making a song not not for me, but to grab people's hearts. As we go on tour, our mission is to get a million people from all over the planet to download this song. Every cent, every download is going to go to directly help those 300 children that sing on the end of the song and many more like them. This music is going to really help people and really heal people's hearts. And I'm not being funny. It's just when you hear these songs, you know there's something very special. And I just can't wait. Okay. 100%. It's even making it that much more special of how we did it. Being the underdog and, and staying independent and getting to the best people to do the best job for this music. It just makes me so proud and so happy. And we did it. We did it with our brains, our talent, and our mind, and just our drive and God. Amazing. Um, this music is big stage music. This music is like, it's not, stadium. it's stadium. It's not club music, man. This is like you go there, the lights, the show, and from the first note, your heart just kind of goes, oh, that's how every song feels to me. It's just amazing. And I can't pick what's my favorite song anymore. I'm just, I'm lost. I love them all. So what would I do if I wasn't playing music? That's a good question. I don't know, I just, I, I can't imagine my life without music. I don't want to do anything else. I mean, I could, you know, try to find another job to make more money or whatever, but, you know, I know that I was put on this planet to make melodies and, and write lyrics and, and move people with the music that comes out of my heart, and that's all I want to do. And I really, truly believe that because I haven't given up, that my music is going to get a chance to be heard by the world. It just feels like we have had this amazing, amazing experience that I don't want to end, but then this end is just the beginning because we have so much to do now that the real work begins. So being able to play some fun guitar parts and, uh, and be on the road with my mates is something I'm really looking forward to. This is G Gonaway, South Beach Studio, signing out! Sequence out! <laughs> so stupid. So what's next? We're about to hit the road and take our music to the world. We hope to see you. Thanks for listening to my story. It's been a long journey and a bumpy one, but I have a feeling we're just getting started. Yeah.
You